let's take a look at the molecular geometry of PBR3. So we have our Lewis structure here, and that gives us a two-dimensional picture of PBR3, but it really doesn't give us that 3D shape that we're looking for. So you can imagine that the bromine atoms and then that lone pair of electrons there, they're going to spread out as far away from each other as they can in accordance with valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. And that'll give this molecule its shape. We can use the AXN notation to help us accurately predict what that shape is going to be and to give us an idea about the bond angles. So A, that's the central atom, that's the phosphorus there in the middle. X, that's the number of atoms attached to that phosphorus, and we have the three bromine atoms. We'll put our three right here. And N, that's the number of lone pair or unbonded electron pairs. We have only one of those on top of the phosphorus. So that gives us AX3N. We can look that up on a table, and we see we have AX2, AX3, all the way down to AX2N, AX2N2, and here we have AX3N, and that's what we're looking here with PBR3. That tells us we have a trigonal pyramidal or pyramidal molecular geometry, and that the angles are going to be about 109.5. They won't be exactly 109.5, but it gives us a general guide. If we look at that molecular shape in three dimensions, we can see our phosphorus there in the middle in orange, and then the bromines are around it. And we should also put those two electrons there that are floating above that phosphorus atom. Now we said the angle on this, and we're talking about an angle like here or here, is about 109.5. It turns out that it's really experimentally about 101 degrees. So that's the molecular geometry for PBR3. It is trigonal pyramidal and it has bond angles of 101 degrees. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.